Hello, brothers and sisters. Today, we're just going to be looking at uh, how, when we are in our trials and tribulations, it's not all bad because many times we just tend to look at the things that we can see. Sure, they may be daunting, but we fail to use our sense of faith. That is the ability to be able to look to the unseen. We'll look through a few examples from the Bible, perhaps even from people that you are in your lives, you'll be able to see that those that move by faith always come out winners. They may go through uh, grievous trials and tribulations, but all that does is it brings them to their destiny. Trials and tribulations shape us into what we are supposed to be. Because when everything is going right, which is like having ice cream, anybody can have ice cream, even those without teeth. They can enjoy ice cream, just lick it away until it's finished. But when it comes down, like the Bible says, it is the proof that you've been with God and now you are now able not only to lick ice cream, but to chew on the bones of gospel. And what brings you to that is none other than trials and tribulation. Let's just share my, 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 my um, our point for the time being. Today I'm just going to title it Jesus in No Trial. Here I'm just trying to show you that whenever you are in your grievous bottom of the barrel, trials and tribulations, Jesus is right there with you all the time. The only thing that happens is when you use your faith and say, look, Lord, I know you're here and you are with me. And I am with you. And the Bible says, I'll be with you. In with you, even in you, to the end of the world. So wherever you are, whether it be at work, whether it be home, whether it be anywhere you can go, when you realize that Jesus is with you, you also be a Christian. For many times, people are Christians in front of crowds. Because they know that somebody knows you. I don't want them to see this. <clears throat> when you still do that, you still have a risk. Think about this. Don't go where Jesus will go. Don't say what Jesus will say. And certainly don't drink what Jesus will drink. And then you come out right. Let's have the scripture, Matthew 28, 20. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. So amen is the last thing that is here. So whatever you're going through, God is still with you. And like it says in John 8, 31, if you hold to my teaching, you really are my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you. So it is important to see in that scripture that you have to hold on to the teaching. And when you're holding on, what that does is it takes away the, because Jesus is God the key to set you free from the death and that we were put into by the first Adam. So when you do that, hold on to the whole Bible. That's why I've always hammered on this. If you say you're a Christian and there's some verses in the Bible that you don't agree with, then you have not reached this point of being free. You're still being uh, fettered, bound by your unbelief because of your denomination or because of your pastor, some of these scriptures 
things have changed. Remember in Malachi 3, God says, I'm God and I change not. So from Genesis to Revelation, God is not going to change the scripture for anyone. So when you reach that way, you believe it. the whole Bible, whether you understand it or not, that's when you become free. So and I also want you to remember that in times of the trial, Jesus brought me here. And he will, by his will, I am in the district. And that will I rejoice. Remember, it is Jesus. Because he wants you to eat the bones of the good who actually pushes you. Pushes you. Yes, push. Because if Bishop Shadrach and Ben Nimo had been told, okay, you have a choice to go in there or not to go in, they wouldn't have gone in. So you, you and I. So God has to push. So he uses the system. In this case, Mishik Shadrach and Abed Nugo, he used the king to put them. That's what Peter, in first Peter 4, is talking about. Because I am in this furnace uh, because God pushed me here. He brought me here. So because he has brought me here, I am now God's responsibility. It's not my responsibility. It's not up to me. To come out of this situation that Jesus himself has pushed me into. Because he, even here, he will keep me in his love, Isaiah 60, 60, and give me grace and glory. That David talks about in Psalm 84 in Romans 5. Yes, surely he will make the trial a blessing, Deuteronomy 23. Teaching me lessons, he wants me to learn. So God is in these trials and tribulations. What Job calls the airship experience. Because he wants you to see another dimension of him. Like for instance, Abraham didn't understand God Jehovah died. When he went to the mountain, he understood what Jehovah died. Was all about. And then you, under the trial, I will be quiet. Psalm 37 verse 7. Praise him. For in his good time, he will bring me out again. Just how and when he knows best. So when you get into that trial, it's time to see that. And relax and know that he is doing his thing. Is Jesus put me into there? So it is his responsibility to pull you out of there. Because remember, there are two forces that are fighting the devil and Jesus. So what God is doing in you is fighting the devil through you because God works through human instrumentality. The devil works through human instruments. So what he is doing, he is pushing you into those because it is the battle and the fault between the devil and God himself. And that battle is you. It's the scripture. The devil will come and tell you, no, this scripture was for another day. The Holy Ghost will say, no, God is you. And as so then I am here in this trial by God's appointment, as said in First Peter 4, in his keeping, First Peter under his training in Revelation 319, for his name, as we see written by um, Solomon in Ecclesiastes. 3 verse 11. That I may glorify him, even as First Peter 4 tells us, that all the trials we go through are more precious than sins of God and comfort others. So that 
experience, like in 2 Corinthians 1, verse 4 to 6, you are going through that experience. Let's say, for instance, the sister who is married, she can't have children like Sarah. The, the way she, she deal with that is this. Look back into the Bible. If you don't believe Genesis, then you lose out what is in Genesis. Because in Genesis, we are given an example of a sister. We had the same problem. We had to wait 25 years before she got the son. So you go back to Genesis and you say, what is it that God is expecting you to do? So when you look at how Sarah behaved when she didn't have a child, then you behave the same way. How did she behave? She even bought the little booties, she bought the napkins, she bought the nappies, she bought everything that she needed for that little child, even before. And those things, things that she needed for the baby were there for 25 years. So we have got to there is a reason that you are in that position. Because when you actually have the child, you become a testimony from the field. So our health and tribulations, what they do is they will bring, number one, they bring honor and glory to God because when you are in your trial, you can you cannot make yourself a defeat that fire because you didn't put yourself there. God pushed you. So you cannot uh, release yourself from that prison that God has pushed you in. So because it's only God because the devil ain't going to help you for sure who can take you up from that trial and tribulation. When he does, then that brings honor to God himself. And what does it do to you? Because people, they don't see God. They see you, but because he lives in you, when you finally have that child after so many years, then the people will realize that there is something in you that they don't have. Because you waited patiently, remember the patience of God, waiting for deliverance. So it brings you to a point where you have a testimony that you can talk about. Not only that, after that trial, you will know God in a deeper fashion. Like for instance, Abraham knew God, he read his word and all that, and he helped him in wars and stuff like that. But he didn't know God as the creator. But when he created that realm for him to substitute for his son, then he knew that there was Jehovah Jireh. So many times, your trials are there to show you that they use Jehovah Dad or Jehovah Rafa, Jehovah Mkadeh, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Ra, Jehovah Tzidkenu, Jehovah Shama, depending on what your affliction is. You are sick with the cancer. When he heals you, then you know, like Job said, I know my Redeemer given. You don't, it, it, many people know. God by reading the Bible, which is enough. You have to know him by experience, and it is trials and tribulations and and all this that bring that experience to us. So it is important when you are in your suffering. Don't complain. Don't mourn. Let's look at a few examples of our brothers and sisters in the Bible. Let's look at Abraham. We've already looked at him. Look at Abraham. He now knew that there was God called Jehovah Jireh, the provider, the one who provides a sacrifice for himself. Bishop Shadrick and Abednego, when they were being pushed into this trial, they didn't know 
that Jesus was with them at that particular time from whenever your trial begins to when it ends. Jesus is there. But the thing of it is, he only comes or at the manifestation stage when he is delivering you in the situation. So they now, it's not like Jesus appeared. No, he was already there, but they, like Revelation says, you need eyes out from the temple. That is eyes that can see what God is doing in your particular hour. That is what is called the message of the hour. And thank God for everything that he did in the past. This is not the day of our This is the end time. So we have a different hour. So the eyes out, that's why the Bible says, I pray that you get eyes out so you can see the movement of God in this. Jesus was already there, but he only manifested. So he opened his eyes. Some of you might say, because I know many people say that Christians don't read the Bible. Read about Gehazi and Elijah. Elijah, when he looked, no, no, Gehazi, when he looked, he saw a lot of natural souls coming with their spears. But when he went to Elijah, he was not even surprised, he didn't care. He was safe because he knew there was more with him than those natural soldiers. So although Elisha could see those soldiers, because he was a spiritual man, he was a spiritual person, he was doing things that were evil. He didn't run. And then until they prayed, he said, Lord, open the eyes of this boy. He can see. And when his eyes were open, you were now able to see that every bush, every tree, there was an angel in this world waiting. So whenever you are in trial and tribulation, by faith, you must be able to see angel sitting everywhere, ready to fight on your behalf. Because he is saying, you shall go to war. He shall not fight. For the Lord shall fight for you. He shall go to war. He shall not fight. For the Lord shall fight for you. It is not up to you. It is not up to you. Fight. So we shall tell you in the Bible. And when they believe, the eyes will open to see all, all this time where it's like, Jesus, what are you doing? All the time. Look at our brother Jonah. He's in the ocean, in a fish that is prepared by God. And when I said God actually prepares it, if you're speaking, you know, God that prepared the fish to swallow Jonah. No one can eat on the throat of a young child, especially constantly fish that of himself to be back in tribulation. This is certain constant trial and tribulation, which is before that is tailored for you to make you to your life. Because without that, you will never reach your destiny and your destination. So we look at David as well. How come a 17 year old was not afraid to be giant? Yet, the whole army of Israel, including Saul himself, was in the shoulder of Saul. They were not afraid. They were afraid. They were thinking, hey, so we negotiate with this guy. David, with the inspiration, knowing that it was his time. There is a season under this. Your season to rise is right now. Not tomorrow, but today. Okay. Now it's right. Now it's your season to shine. That's your reason to receive. So when you're in tribulation, 
you must know that God is purpose in his heart to move you and walk the fire. God is purpose in his heart. You found the favor in his sight to be used by God to achieve his purpose and program of life. Because trials and tribulations are not just there for the sake of it. You bring glory to God. You bring testimonies in yourself. And then you bring glory to God. You, the working relationship with God, comes to you because you know him. Sometimes when you become a Christian, you see, you walk with him, he's perfect for you all the time. You can almost pray how your life is going to be. It's like, for instance, I think to Places where I work, I work with them. And they say we are taking some people out of this organization right now. This coronavirus. A lot of companies are trying to do that. But if you are with the son of God, that's not the kind of problem. That's the kind of thing. Because they have no problem. Even this coronavirus issue that everybody is crying about, moaning about. Is an excuse that God has allowed the devil to do so that he can raise you up and you need to give his sin your season. Because your season, every time there's a problem in your life, it's a season for you to receive the blessing. So when you say we are returned to people and so forth and so forth, in my mind, I start thinking, oh, this is my hand because some of these managers are going to be. Fire or drink. So that gives me a chance to go up and knock the fire. Because God, like the little does, is trying to lift me up. But if you are negative, then you will be violent. You need to move by faith. And believing that everything that happens to you has the cause of It doesn't matter, even losing a love. Even the death itself. That's why Paul says, Death, where is your sting? The grave, where is the victory? There is nothing. When Jesus died on the cold because of Calvary, he defeated every enemy that you can think of that is including death, including the grave. That's why a proper Christian, true Christians, not really moan and moan and cry and all this. Yes, you grieve. But you don't do it like the other people in the world because they cry without hope. We cry knowing that there is hope that we will see them again. We shall see them. Yes, sir, they have not gone away from us. They have just gone into a new language that we cannot see them. But those who are not Christian, they are hoping to open their door and grieve like a Christian. Grieve in the Lord, knowing that everything that happens to you or to those around you is being pre planned, predestined by God Himself. And the reason is in the new season. So it's important to know that everything is there for a Look at Jonah there. He is inside the fish. I don't think your trial is as worse than his Western job. Imagine being in the inside of a fish. And all the, the stuff that the fish was eating, all the mucus, everything else that you can think of from there, the pool that he was inside. But while he was in there, Jonah found time to kneel down. Remember, I said it was a specially created fish. So God would have created a situation where Jonah could kneel down and find God because God is in fact, He knows what He needs. So He forces you to go in these times when you're sick, He forces you to go on these knees to pray because you need okay, everything going okay. You need to pray. That's why I've always said it. You go to die, prepare yourself for the things that are before you come. So He could kneel down. And remember, I want you to see. Jonah was praying, quoting 
the prayer that was made by Saul years ago. And he said, I will look, because Solomon, when he was praying, he said, Lord, when your children are in trouble, anywhere in the world, if they would kneel down and look unto this temple, you remember that the temple was what? Brick and mortar. And yet God had the prayer of Solomon. That's why when Solomon prayed that prayer, even the uh, preacher, they could not minister because of the presence of God. So Jonah remembering that prayer, God and God, Solomon and prayed. God, uh, how did he do it? He just went straight in fish. So all the people that Jonah went to, the whole country was saved from hell. So no affliction. There is something that you can see, I can see, that God is there. Something is with me. So the whole country is saved because of the Lord. It's affliction. So your affliction is saved. The purpose in this book, in this book, all you have to do is to submit within the confines of the Bible, the guidance. Let's look at some quotations, you know, biblical and, and, and all. So you can see that it's not just me that talking about this. What does Brother Branham say in the word in the uh, message, message Shalom that was preached in 1960? He says here, suffering for his name's sake is growing pains for his grace. Yeah. Suffering for his word. See, is growing pains of his grace. Yes, sir. Just remember, it's the grace of God has been given to you, oh my. So it's God, when you, it's God giving you the grace. When you got that sickness, that case, whatever it is, it is God giving you grace that you can overcome it, not live with it for the rest of your life, but to overcome it and become a testimony under your feet so you can say, Another cancer comes. If you've already beaten another one, you will not even go to the same, same way that another cancer life. That's how you know. And he also says in another message, it's also called Shalom by Christian and Christ. He says, Remember, suffering for his word's sake is growing pain in his grace. When you suffer for his word's sake, it's just growing pain. It means your suffering, your action. You grow in Jesus Christ. You know how a little kid, 10, 12 years old, gets the pain. When children are young, they get the pain. We don't worry about them. They say, Oh, I feel pain in here because they are growing as they grow. It's painful to grow, like some of us do not do here. When you feel the pain of the muscle, that means the muscle are actually growing. That's why when you go on a Monday, you pump the weight. You wait another day, so it means all the muscles now are grown because why? That pain means stretching. In fact, it means the muscles themselves, the lift weights, they actually break, and then they heal together. And then they heal, they heal, uh, and the, the, the muscle stays in that way. So that's why it stays, uh, you know, it's not that big. Uh, so that's what is happening to you. The pain that you're suffering, the affliction that you're suffering, the, 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 the disappointment that you're suffering, and growing pain because he is trusting you. He will not go to the children of the devil to do that. The devil does that himself to the little children. There's nothing in the end of this happening. So when they come to you as children, mama, my arms hurt and my legs are hurting. So forth. It's a good thing. It shows he has got some good back in him. So if you're suffering for the name of word's sake, but remember, if you are suffering because you're a thief or something, you murder. No, that's not what you're talking about. You're talking about a Christian suffering for his name. You're suffering for his name. He's growing up. So that's what it means that God has found, you have found grace in his favor. 
Trust. Trust. Let's look at the other quotation in the message Job United. That's who Job sin will break you under. Say, I am not my redeemer. In the last days, you will be there, here to bleed and die in my place. Though the skin will destroy my body, yet in my flesh, I will see God. I'll see him for myself, my eyes shall be born and meet another. So the suffering, the issue that Job went through with all the things that he suffered from the pastor and all his friends looking down on him, calling him a sinner. What is that? He would have that ability to go as far as we know the Bible. Job was the first one to know that there was going to be a resurrection. He was brother since without the resurrection, there's nothing to do with it because if we live this life and there's no other life, then we have lived in death. Let's eat and drink and be married. But that resurrection, Job was able to see the death of Christ and his resurrection. Then there is a resurrection. So he realized righteous people do not die because he looked at the trees. He looked at the grass. You know, when it's winter, all the grass is gone. All the sap in the tree goes into the roots. The leaves are gone, the fruits are gone. But come summer, they come up again. So they are perpetual life. So you realize Christians do not die. They just change their accommodation. To the higher one. And then this is the most important one. After we become his property, we are not his property. Now we are the house of God. Yes, we are the house of God. 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 Our confession and our baptism, and our promise to walk in life for Him. Then every child that comes upon us is to protect us for His glory. Is to bring us to Him. So number one, as I said earlier, the trial is you or you because you are there to protect you for God's glory. Number one. Number two is to bring us to a place where God can make Himself more real to us than He was before the trial. So after your trial, you will know God better than the kid Abraham knew that there was a God called the Lord of Heaven after. So it is after your tribulation, after your suffering, after you have achieved through the Lord Himself. Written on the fire, then you will no longer be much better in the power of the resurrection. For most people, for most Christians, so called Christians, God is just a myth. They don't know who he is. Everything does. You only know him by the word, you only know him by the spoken word and the written word. As I said in the other video, you need to know him in the manifest of the thing that comes through the trials and tribulations. So, brother, sister, whatever it is you're going to despise it, you will be a Christian. It is God. If you have found the you have found the in his side, and he knows that he abounds in his nature. So, stay steady, stay with what you believe. That's why we need to be in Bible because we are in our future. At least as if you are sick, you keep repeating the history of our Lord. I'm the Lord of every year. There is no one sick in that city. So we need to know the word that applies to the situation that we are in. And when we put the word in front of you, in front of you, the better is it. 
And remember, suffering for his name's sake is growing pains of his grace. Growing pains of his grace. So that you be worthy of God. For he's the only one who deserves the grace. And you be blessed to you. And you know God in the power of his name. Shalom.